Last week we talked about how to precify your art and I received tons of questions on how to do that. So I decided to select the most common mistakes and I will talk about all of these five common mistakes with you right here so we will not have the same problems. Do you want to know what they are? So come with me. Hi, I'm Sira. I was born in an artistic family and as an agent, manager and producer, I've worked for many years selling artists from all around the world. Today, I want to help you to become a full-time artist. Hello, I am Sira. And if you don't know this yet, we have lives on Instagram. And if you don't follow me, you start to follow me right now. Every Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, we are always talking about the most important topics for you to become a full-time artist. And I'm here to talk to you about five common mistakes that you may have when precifying your art. I know this is a very hard topic, but if you can avoid these five mistakes, you will be an advantage in this very competitive market. The first mistake that I see is when people put their emotions ahead. My tip is don't let emotions get on the way. What I mean by that? Sometimes you love so much an artwork that you just made that you cannot imagine a price that is more accessible for your audience. You start with a very, very expensive price because you have a personal connection with this artwork. When did this happen? Most of the times people will never buy this artwork. It's not because they don't like your artwork. It's not because they don't like your message. It's not because they don't connect with you. It's just because they don't have the money to invest on this artwork. And sometimes this artwork doesn't really value this money when you look to your audience. It's kind of hard to justify why that is worth $120,000. I'm sure some art dealer somewhere can, you know, conjure up how it's a, a metaphor for human degradation and suffering. Um, but still, I'm not gonna pay $120,000 for, you know, a molding banana. Partially because I, I don't have $120,000, um, but also, because if I wanted a molding banana, I, I would just go to my kitchen. We can understand that that's super valuable for you, but when you're trying to sell to somebody else, we need to understand how this person will value your work. Every time you buy something, you create a transaction. Each transaction consists of a buyer exchanging money or credit with a seller for goods, services, or financial assets. All cycles and all forces in an economy are driven by transactions. So, if we can understand transactions, we can understand the whole economy. A market consists of all the buyers and all the sellers making transactions for the same thing. You are exchanging things. You are giving something that you believe does has value, your artwork. And your buyer will give something that they believe that has value, their money. If both of you guys understand that the value is balanced, you have a transaction, you can sell your artwork. Yay! If it's not balanced, we cannot sell. <laughs> so you can only sell if you understand the other person. Since the beginning, when you were creating your artwork, when you were imagining for whom you're going to sell this, you would need always to put yourself on their shoes and try to understand how they will see what you are doing. So you can understand better how you're going to put the value and translate after in a price for this person to buy. And if you put a very expensive price, maybe they will never buy. Try to be realistic with the value that other people will see in their artwork. But also, it's the other way around. Some people feel that they are not really professionals, they don't sell a lot, so they are starting right now, or any other excuse you can imagine. And because of these characteristics, they feel that they cannot put a certain price. And they start to make all the artwork way too cheap. This is also can be a problem for you, because you are not receiving back all the money that you invested, but also because you are telling people that you're not valuable enough. And when people see something that's really good, that they like, but 
there's this very cheap price, they start to doubt about the quality, about the transportation, the shipping, or any other characteristics. People start to ask themselves, why this is so cheap? There's something wrong there. And they decide not to buy as well. So try to find this perfect spot where you are not overvaluing your art but also you are not underestimate yourself. My second tip is don't hide your price. This is a very common mistake. When people start to post on social media, for example, and they post just the picture of their artwork, they just put the picture and they don't say, what is that, why is that, how much cost, what's the dimensions of that art piece, or how long is that theater um, play. So how you imagine that people who will see this post will understand all the characteristics of the product or service that you are offering? No thanks. I choose my own destiny. They will not know. And if they don't know, if they don't understand, you know, they ignore. Because we do that. If you go on Instagram and you see a painting that you love, but there is no more information about that, it's really hard for you to go and buy this art piece. We are too lazy to go after and try to find all these characteristics. If this is not on our face, we will never see and we'll never look after. So every time that you are posting on social media, in your website, if you're mentioning something on in an interview, whatever it is, give people hints on how they can access your product and how much you are charging for that. If you have more space, also add the technique that you use it, also add the dimensions, if it's a music, for example, how long it is, what the size or the type of the file, if it's a dance exhibition, tell where it is, uh, for how long will be on this theater, so on. The more information you give to your audience, the easier it is for them to go after and really buy from you. It takes me to the point number three that don't forget to tell your story. Again, if you just post a picture of your artwork and you don't say anything about that, people will have a hard time understanding. And as I said, if they don't understand, they ignore. The best way you can do to connect people with your artwork is telling them a story. Vincent van Gogh is admitted to a mental asylum. It was originally planned that he'd go to a large public institution in Marseille with over a thousand patients right in the heart of the city. If he had, there is no chance that he would have produced the extraordinary work he did. In the small asylum at San Remy, with only 41 patients, Vincent would be treated with kindness and understanding. The doctors quickly realized that the only way Vincent would survive was if he was given the space and the freedom to paint and create. Art would keep him alive. Maybe you can tell them why did you create this artwork in the first place? Why this is important for you? What are the most interesting things that you can see on this art piece? Or even show them how you created this. What's your creative process of making of or anything that people can feel part of your story. But again, we are lazy, so tell your story in a very brief way. If you're posting this on your Instagram, try to keep your story as short as one paragraph. If you're putting your website, maybe you have a little bit more space, but try to be really easy to understand. Use the simple words and be brief. With Starry Night, Van Gogh teaches us to see the sky, not as it looks, but perhaps as it feels. This image is universal and that we've all looked out on a night sky, but never have we seen it quite like this. In a career that lasted only a decade, Van Gogh articulated a style that we can't forget, that continues to draw crowds and captivate us. The fourth mistake I see a lot of artists doing is work just with one point of price. And what I mean by that? So let's say that all the paintings, all the arts that I have here, I bought for a hundred bucks each one of them, for example. They are almost the same size, they have the same mediums, they have the same techniques, so I can imagine that they are equivalents. However, if you just have paintings to sell at a hundred dollars average, you will never be able to help some people on your audience that just have $20 to invest. 
or those who love what you do and would invest $2,000 in your artwork. However, if you work with multiple different types of prices and you have more complicated artworks with better techniques, with better material at 2000 and others in a very simplistic way with the more accessible materials for $20, you can see that you are serving a bigger audience than if you just focus in one type of price or another type of price. This also will give you more hints about what your audience wants. If you start to see that most of your audience is buying those $20 prints that you have, maybe this is the main part for you to focus on since your audience is responding positively to what you're offering. However, you can realize that actually people prefer to buy the 2000 ones and you can dedicate more time, more attention and better materials to create more of this type of artwork. You will learn with your audience all the time. So be open and try to test everything. I need to tell you that I have a full masterclass for free. How can you take the leap and become the artist that you want to become? It's not a sales pitch. In this masterclass, I will help you with a real training that will give you the step by step. So if you want to check this, go here in this website and you watch a two hour class totally for free so you can start to be a full-time artist right now. And the last mistake that I see is when people think that everyone's like them. Try not to limit yourself based on how much you can pay. And when I say that, it's again, for more expensive or cheaper things. Maybe you can only invest on artwork if they are very, very, very cheap. But it doesn't mean that your audience cannot invest more money on your artwork or the other way around. Maybe you just imagine that's valuable to invest in art if it's a big, huge piece that is super expensive. And you imagine that your audience think exactly like you. Maybe you're wrong. As I said before, if you don't ask your audience about what they want, you will never know. We learn with our audience day after day. So be open to receive what they want to show you and be open to make those tests. Offer different things, offer different prices, offer different sizes, offer different services, something that's already ready to your audience or some commissioned work, for example. You can test so many different things and the more you test, the better will be your attention to your price and you can understand how much you can go from expensive to cheaper and you will find your sweet spot. So I hope you could understand better on how to price your art, understand these five very common mistakes and I see you next week.